Up next, a brief history of Germantown. Stay tuned. This is Black Rock Center for the Arts in Germantown. Since 2002, this facility has served as a vibrant visual and performing arts center for the Up County. On today's Paths to the Present, we'll learn how Black Rock got its name as we explore the history of Germantown. Joining me today to help anchor the show is Councilmember Craig Rice. Craig not only represents this part of the county, he lives here as well. Welcome, Craig. Thanks so much for having me, Barbara. Sure. So, Craig, how long have you and your family lived in Germantown? So, we moved here in 2003. Uh, we were living in Rockville at the time, my wife and I, and decided this would be a great place to start a family. I'm just curious, how much of the history were you aware of when you moved here? Beyond the fact of that uh, Germantown was north, going up 270, and then uh, the fact that there were a lot of cows that we had heard were here as well. So, I don't think you're alone. In that I think with all the development that's happened here it's pretty hard to uncover all of the history but fortunately we have the Germantown Historical Society and they help prepare a video that we're going to watch today why don't we take a look at that now excellent historian and Germantown resident Susan Soderberg began our Germantown history tour in Seneca Creek State Park where these ruins are located well, this is Black Rock Mill, and it's important for two reasons. One is the Black Rock, which Black Rock Center is named for. That is a rock that they used for building. It's a schist, it's very hard, and this mill was actually built from the Black Rock, as well as many other buildings and chimneys around here. And the second reason is because of the mill itself. Black Rock Mill was one of about a dozen mills that were on Seneca Creek or the tributaries to Seneca Creek in Germantown. These mills had to be located next to the creeks because they were powered by the water. Black Rock Mill dates to 1815. It was both a grist mill and a sawmill. It remained in operation through the 1920s, making it one of the longest used water-powered mills in the area. Another aspect that makes this site important is this cliff. Well, the Black Rock Cliff that is across the creek from Black Rock Mill has a rock shelter overhang. There is also one further up uh, the creek, and these were the rock shelters that were used by Native Americans in the woodland period. As European settlers moved into this part of the county, they used the trails first forged by Native Americans eventually turning them into roads. 355 and Clopper Road and River Road were the three main north-northwest roads coming up from Georgetown, which was a big Piscataway settlement. So they would turn these roads then into highways for the wagons. And along these highways, more roads were built so farmers could reach their mills. Today, all over the county, we find roads with mill in their name demonstrating just how many once operated here. As the population increased after the Revolutionary War, new towns were created. First came Middlebrook, then Nielsville, then Clarksburg, all along what is Route 355 today. Little by little, the settlers began to spread out, eventually coming to the area we now call Germantown. The first settlers in Germantown were actually three brothers the uh, Waters brothers. They were Basil, William, and Zachariah. And they were given farms by their father who had amassed a whole lot of land beginning in Brookville area. They actually shared a mill called the Waters Mill. That was actually three mills in one. A lot of these mills were either just grist mills for the wheat and grain and corn, or mills for sawing and uh, this one was also for flaxseed oil. As time went on, churches were built along with more roads to connect them. The Presbyterian Church is an example. There was a church in Nielsville in 1845 and also one in Darnstown. This was served by the same minister. The minister had to travel that long distance and they built a road for him, which is old Route 118. And where roads crossed, small villages grew. There once was one here, where old Route 118 meets Clopper Road. And that's where the Germans settled. 
the Schaefer's and the Richter's and the Snyder's and they've set up shops or services like blacksmithing and um, saddle making, repair, that sort of thing. And so the farmers who came from the area would refer to that crossroads as Germantown because they had German accents. That's how it got its name. Then, in the late 1800s, big changes came to Germantown. Well, this is the Germantown train station, and Germantown has always been a transportation-based town. It started as a crossroads village, and then when the train came through after the Civil War, it became a railroad town. When the Metropolitan Branch of the B&O Railroad opened in 1873, it dramatically changed the face of Montgomery County as a whole. It laid the groundwork for the railroad suburbs in the down county, as well as caused a significant shift to the economy in the up county. When the train came through, it changed agriculture in Montgomery County because they grew things that were perishable, like apples and peaches and milk. A lot of the farmers turned to dairy farming after the train came through. The train station in Germantown was designed by Francis Baldwin. After a fire destroyed it in 1978, this replica was rebuilt by the county. The waiting stations are based on the milk stations, where the farmers would bring in the milk cans and then load them onto the trains. They would have been higher and they would have been closer to the railroad tracks, but it's using the same architectural design, also by Francis Baldwin. A village grew up around this station, and with that, Germantown's commercial center moved one mile to the east. Well, the first thing that happened was they built a mill next to the train station. These were the Bowman brothers, and their mill was steam-powered, so they didn't need the, the water power. They could put it wherever they want, so of course they put it next to the train station. So that became, later on, a really big mill called the Liberty Milling Company, and uh, really was the second largest mill in the state of Maryland. Not only did the train facilitate transportation out of Germantown, it also made it easier to get to Germantown. Goods were coming up from the town that people had never been able to buy before. So you had general stores and you had uh, people coming up to vacation to get away from the hot, stuffy, smelly city. You also had people called tinkers who were salesmen. They would come up on the train, rent a room. We had two boarding houses here and they would rent a horse and buggy from our very uh, busy livery stable and go around the countryside selling stuff. For decades, this railroad town thrived. Today, little remains from those days. Besides the replica train station and several houses, there's this barber shop, this 1883 house that once served as a store, and the first bank building to be erected here. The Liberty Milling Company, they would pay their employees with checks and the employees would have no place to cash their checks except go out, take it over to the general store and they charged them oh, a great deal of money to cash their checks at the general store. So a um, very wealthy man in town, uh, Andrew Baker, got together with some other people and they formed the Germantown Bank Company in 1922. They built this little community bank, and it has a walk-in vault. The bank was actually built around the vault. They brought in the vault on the train, set it down on a big concrete slab, and then built the building around it. This little Germantown bank never failed during the Depression, because it's more like a credit union, and they took care of their customers. They really cared about them. It was the days of then, uh, Savings and trust was really a savings and trust. Today, this structure houses the offices of the Germantown Historical Society, of which Susan is the current director. She says that things began to change for Germantown after a new mode of transportation was invented. When the automobile came in the early 20th century, everybody wanted to have their own automobile. We had the automobile suburbs, uh, developing and you had roadside stores uh, popping up, not just at crossroads, but wherever they could attract uh, customers. 
And along Route 355 here in Germantown, one of the primary stores was the Cider Barrel. And the Cider Barrel was built during Prohibition to sell sweet cider, not hard cider. Today, the Cider Barrel stands vacant, but because it is such a good example of what's called novelty roadside architecture, it's been protected as a historic site. And it is protected where it is, next to the road, and we hope to keep it where it is. We also are interested in getting somebody to actually use it. And we just need somebody who wants to sell something. Maybe with the current trends, it would be hard cider. It took a few decades for the lasting effects of the automobile to take hold in Germantown. One big influence happened in 1957. That's when the Atomic Energy Commission, which today is the Department of Energy, decided to locate its headquarters outside of Washington, D.C. for safety reasons. It was during the Cold War, and they were afraid that being bombed, and this was safer to get it way out into the country. When it first opened, there was no I-270, but that highway was in the works. By 1960, Interstate 70 South, as it was called at the time, was completed, providing easy access for the employees. Of course, the employees then had a problem because they had no place to go to eat for lunchtime. They had a long commute. So we had them coming here to the center of Germantown, the only place to eat, which was the general store. And we had them building houses around the area. In fact, one of their employees built a little brick rambler right near here, which has a fallout shelter. The commercial center around the train station remained viable for about another decade. But then, there was an explosion of development near the I-270 exchange, and things shifted again. We are now in the current heart of Germantown, the commercial center, which moved one mile to the east once again, this time to be next to the automobile route, and that's I-270. At that time, there were about 300 people living here after I-270 was completed. Then people started moving in, but the real growth didn't start until the sewer and water came in in 1972. And we are now about 95,000 people in Germantown. Today, Germantown is more like a small city. The commercial center that is surrounded by apartments, townhouses, and single-family homes features stores of all sizes, restaurants, an urban park, a county services center, an active library, and a visual and performing arts center. Because so many historic structures are no longer standing, this piece of public art by John Greenemeyer was erected in 1991 to remind future generations of how Germantown got its start something that is near and dear to Susan Soderbergh's heart. Well, I think that history is so important. And when we know the history of the place where we live and where we bring up our children, then we have more of a sense of being, a sense of community, a sense of roots with this community. So Craig, that last line, knowing our history, gives us a sense of our roots, a sense of community. Tell me, as you are planning for a community's future, how much do you rely on the past? You have to. I mean, you really have to look and understand what the community was predicated on, uh, what it looked to grow into, and then you use that to determine uh, what's going to be best moving forward, how we continue to support our community, how we continue to help them to grow. And I think that a lot of people can learn from learning a lot about their history. And so I hope that a lot of people are going to uh, take this into mind and watch this show because it certainly is going to help us to really look at ways that we can continue in the future to be really successful as a community. Right. Thanks, Craig. Well, that's all the time we have for this show. If you have comments for us or ideas for future shows, Send us an email at paths-present at verizon.net. For County Cable Montgomery, I'm Barbara Grunbaum. Thanks for watching. County Cable Montgomery, your information station.